Junipero Serra, a Spanish Franciscan friar, founded the first California mission in San Diego in 1769. The Kumeyaay Indians who lived in San Diego at the time burned the mission down. And today, critics say the friar's mistreatment of Native Americans should preclude him from sainthood. Joining me to talk about Serra's legacy in San Diego is Kacha Rizlimbaldi, assistant professor of American Indian Studies at San Diego State University. And Kacha, what was San Diego like when, Kutcha, uh, when uh, Serra arrived here back in the 1700s? You know, I mean, California Indian peoples, they, they say they come from the place that they're from. And they, so it was a very complex, dynamic group of people and society. You're talking about, uh, you know, large areas of people living here. Um, and they're doing everything that anybody would do in a culture and society. They have law and politics and religion. They have dances. They have gatherings. They have marriage. They have families. Um, so I think you know, when you're thinking about San Diego as a place, it has always been a place that people have wanted to live and have lived here and done lots of things with it. So back then, the people who already lived here, the Kumeyaay, uh, how did they respond to the Spaniards' arrival? It was very interesting. The Kumeyaay actually responded very succinctly. Like, they set up the mission and then automatically they start, you know, resisting the mission. So when Sarah first gets here, he comments that there's not very many Indian people that are coming to the mission saying, I would like to live here, I would like to convert. And for a whole year, they don't come around and he has to figure out ways to bring them in. And then once they get brought in, they lead revolts and rebellions against the, the mission institution. They set it on fire, they tear it down, they poison one of the padres. So their resistance from the beginning was always about that they they were a very like strong people and they didn't want sort of people coming in trying to tell them how they were supposed to be in their own territory. Well as you know there's controversy over Junipero Serra's sainthood because of his treatment of Native Americans back in the 1700s uh, and the missionaries essentially ending uh, the way of life the culture that was here before. What does history tell us about how Sarah treated the uh, Kumeyaay that were here or other Native Americans that were here? I think it's different. I think what we learn in school about Junipero Serra is one very particular story which is that he brought Catholicism and conversion and he brought agriculture and um, I think that when you really start to do the research when you hear the stories when you really start to look at the records what you see is that what he really brought was trying to completely upend and destroy the culture and society in the name of the church but also because the church was trying to colonize the territory they're trying to become the owners of the land and one way to do that is to take in the peoples and to make them into new peoples that then will let you have the land. Which was the practice in yes. the 1700s by Spaniards taking over various yes. land. Are there any examples I think you touched on on his work benefiting uh, Native Americans here in in our region? You know I think when you get when you get any system that comes into contact with another system you're gonna see sort of exchanges of ideas and like the way that things should be run. I think that uh, in an individual level, there were people who married to like each other. So there's like Spanish soldiers who are marrying Indian people. I think that they're, you know, on an individual basis, sure, there was some exchange and interaction. As and growth in and, agriculture, yeah. I think you mentioned. They're actually, I mean, there's been research that shows that California Indian people were very adept at agriculture, at taking care of their territories. And so you're, what you're actually talking about is them coming in and saying, we have this type of agriculture, and California Indians saying, well, we have this type, and this works for our territory and land. Um, so there was an exchange of ideas there. But I think that what happens when they come into the mission system is they don't really want that but California Indians are still open to learning from the, the people back, that are coming in. Back then, yes. let's, let's talk about this. Despite the tactics um, toward Native Americans by the Spanish, many present day Native Americans are actually Catholic. So how does this complicate the issue when we're talking about canonizing uh, Junipero Serra? I think it just shows that, you know, California Indian people are very diverse and that they have a lot of ways that they have approached what has happened here on this place that they have been able to find in the Catholic faith and religion ideas that, that I think run throughout religions and spiritualities. I think that it also shows that, you know, we still have a complicated conversation to have about Unibro Serra. And let's talk about that because back in July, Pope Francis actually apologized uh, to the indigenous people for offenses caused by the Catholic Church uh, during the colon colonial era. Um, how, how does this, making him a saint, is that some sort of contradiction or how is that message from the Pope being received? To me, it's an it's a incredible contradiction. It's sort of a sorry, not sorry, because we're, we're able to kind of ignore the other part of this conversation, which is that Sarah is really about colonization and colonialism and settling this area, an area that wasn't sort of open for business. It was, he was coming here and having to do things in order to make sure that the Indian people weren't going to be able to kind of take the land and keep it for themselves. 
So to me, the Pope then at that point, it's, you're kind of saying, well, I understand that you want to have one conversation, but you don't want to have the other one because you're not quite ready to take apart all of that system. All right, uh, Katja Rizlin-Baldi, thank you so much. Of course, thank you.